Let's talk trolling plugs and setting the hook. Welcome to the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Ryan Van Fleet. So Nomad Lures brought a lot of people into the trolling game. I think that's awesome. Uh, trolling plugs are great, and it when you have one brand like that, then what happens with guys is that they're always looking for something else to add because that's just the way it should be, and you should you should not rely on one lure, okay? And I'm not, I mean, everybody knows that I run the Halco brand, and it's taken me years to perfect that. I feel that the Halco runs best on my downriggers, and it doesn't run very good on windy days when it's kind of rough. There's lots of things that go into that that lure, and I've made lots of modifications to it over the years as far as how I'm how I'm sending it, as far as um, the positioning and all that goes. But the but. I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm going to talk about getting a better hook set with all of your plugs. And the one thing I did a few years ago, I, I would say I did this probably about, I'm going on four and a half years now, is I added a planer bridle to my trolling plug setup. Now, I'm not necessarily using planers. Like I said, I'm running them off the downriggers or I'm running them short or long, just like anybody else would. But I added a planer bridle to my setups, okay? And not only to the plug setup, but to my Sea Witch setups, to my Islander setups, to anything else I'm running for, for Wahoo. And now, why did I do this? Because when I was really watching and talking with and learning some stuff from the planer guys, I was seeing is, is that their hook sets were pretty damn good. And when I see guys were running um, a lot of trolling plugs and stuff, they were they miss a lot of fish, and that's just how it goes. So what I did was, and especially the guys that are getting into the, the you know, there's a lot of guys getting into the, the trolling plug game late, so meaning that they've been doing it just since um, Nomads have come out. So they dabbled a little bit with Rapalas and didn't have much lock, and then they went back to pulling plugs. But now there's guys that are just 100% pulling Nomads because they're pretty easy to pull and they get a lot of bites. But they, you know, the hook sets on, on them, you know, sometimes you catch them all and sometimes you don't. So here's what I've been doing for several years now. It works. You can either, you know, try it out. I would highly recommend that you do. It's going to help. So what I do is I add the planer bridle into the into the mix on all my Wahoo rods. Okay. And what I do is I connect the planer bridle just like I would when I would connect a normal planer bridle to my, you know, 60 or 80 pound braid connected to the shock leader. And then I measure it out to, you know, let's say for example, if I want to run one plug 150 and one plug 250 or one plug 300, so I have three or four different rod setups just like that. So, and what that what that bridle does, I really do feel because since I started doing this, is it really does help set the hook, just like a planer rod. Okay, just like a planer. They those planer guys don't miss many. Okay. Okay. So for you guys that are new and you guys have heard so much out there right now, and I honestly would try this. This works very well for me, and it's very easy to do. Not to mention is it actually, it gives you like a, your setups with accuracy of how far things are measured back. You got your 150 setup versus your 250 versus your 300, just like in planer fishing, okay? So you've got, you can you know make them on yo-yos or whatever, and then you can change them out accordingly, have some backups. But like I, you know, the overall thing in my brain, and that's the great thing about fishing is, is that you can really do whatever the fuck you want. And your theories can be whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know, you can have some guy forcing some shit down your, down you, you know. It's like, you got to do this, you got to do that. Listen, it's your life. Live it however the fuck you want, okay? Do whatever you want. So, but you got to make sure it works. If it doesn't work, you got to move on, okay? So here's what I think. I think that that planer bridle translates to more hookups, okay? It just helps drive that damn hook into that Wahoo's mouth, and there you go. He doesn't shake off many for me anymore since I started doing this, so I really, I'm a firm believer that what I did 
really helped and I'm not going to change anytime soon. Personally, I feel that bridal works for me, okay? It works for the planer guys. They don't miss many. So why wouldn't it work for you guys? And that was my thought. Why wouldn't it work for this? Let's try it. There you go. Boom. Five years later, I'm still doing it. Getting up every morning, tying everything. Um, what I'll do before every trip is I'll replace all the fluorocarbon. Does fluorocarbon really matter? I don't know. Some days I think it does and some days I think it don't. But whatever you do, that's up to you. That's what's so fun about fishing. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do. <laughs> and, and when you learn that, that you don't have to like do exactly like that one guy's telling you you need to do it, and you modify a little bit to work for you, that's when you're going to be successful. So give the planer bridle a shot when you're running plugs. See what happens. It works, it works good for me. So guys, that's all I got for that topic. If you want to dig deeper, you can book a one hour call with me on that topic and I'll go over it with you. Or, and if you wanna learn how to tie it, now like I said, you can use a, a planer bridle, that works great. You can buy them, make your own, but I like to tie mine like I tie my, my mutton crusher rig, okay? And my mutton crusher rig is the how I tie it. It's available for sale at goodkarmafishingtackle.com. So you'll see in the video, I use a 30 pound braid uh, in the video, but uh, like I said, just think of it when you when you buy it. Just think about um, that I'm using 60 pound braid for wahoo fishing, so 60 or 80. So and you can use the Dacron or you can use the Jerry Brown hollow core, but I feel that Jerry Brown hollow core works the best. Okay, I don't use Dacron anymore. So there you go. Uh, Patchery Fishing, super exciting, launching the Patchery, of course, on February 1st. Eight-week intensive. Oh, I know everything about Patchery Fishing. Uh, it's all over YouTube. I watch all the YouTubers down in the Keys. Well, I can tell you what. What I'm going to show in this video and, and talk about isn't going to be the basics about what rod you're using. And I'm going to go over specific baits with you guys. Um, I haven't used any shrimp this this um. I've used a little bit of shrimp, but not a lot. I'm using some different baits this winter that's catching mangroves all the time. Okay, it, it works very well. So I'll go over some um, some setups with you guys about the, my mangrove setup and how to get them during the day, some special chumming techniques that I'm using um, that, that are gonna blow you away. Uh, it's really simple stuff that you're not gonna find on YouTube. Teach you how to find some spots I've got something really cool to show you on how to find some grouper holes and what an actual grouper hole looks like from above. So versus like it's it's pretty cool and you it's it's going to be a lot of fun and you'll be able to like pick out grouper holes pretty easily now once after I show you you'll know what to look for. So anyways, uh, that's all I got here for the day. So if you want to get signed up for the Patrick course 8 week intensive it starts on um, February 1st and there's a private Facebook group for that as well that where you'll be able to you know get involved and have a Q&A sessions and all that other good stuff that go with the course and stay tuned for the next module I'll be launching it'll be an intense Wahoo module intense so little tricks that are not out there on actually how to how I predict the Wahoo bite and I'm not wrong very often I'm not wrong very often so also too i've updated all my blogs especially the ones that go with sat fish and how to catch my mai, how to catch wahoo so if you have not dug into my blogs i highly suggest you do because they go into actually predicting bites and the new sat fish blog i mean the sat fish blog i did a while ago but i went back and i updated it with a ton of information a ton of examples on how to find weed lines um, I put a lot of different examples in there of, of what I actually use and I mean, I'm sorry, what examples of the um, images that I've taken in the past that have led to successful outings for myself. So go to goodkarmasportfishing.com, go to the blogs, and then you can read through the Satfish blog. Oh, read it through all the blogs. They've all got lots of golden nuggets in there for you guys. That's all I got for today. Thanks for tuning in. Get signed up for the Patch Reef course, the eight-week intensive. Can't wait to see you there. And remember, 
Anytime you're fishing, it's all good.